We've been discussing this amazing second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence. We've gotten through what passes for the first two sentences. They use all sorts of weird punctuation here. <laughs> and now they're going on to say that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it's the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles as organizing its powers in such forms as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. And, and just to make sure, because they're, they're writing in a very... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they get a bit ornate in this sentence. Ornate. Uh, that's uh, the right they word. added that first sentence a whole lot, when, so it's very clear. But this <laughs> sentence is a little bit ornate. But, but when they write that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, they're talking, again, of the, the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right. In other words... In other words, if you have a king who's taken away people's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So this is, they're talking about the English government, not just the parliament, but the king now has become destructive of these unalienable rights that we're supposed to protect. Yeah, and that we need to form a new government to affect their safety and happiness. Right, but most importantly, it's the right of the people to alter or abolish it. In other words, they're saying something that has not yet been quite accepted by history, which is if you're a people and you don't like your government, you can overthrow it. We hadn't had that many revolutions, you know, in the past 200 years leading up to that. And this is the beginning of an age of revolution where people say, oh yeah, we have the right to abolish our government. Whoa, that's a holy and it's cow. The people doing it, not another king, not another ruler. That's right. most of history is other kings. Exactly. Most of history, I mean, for the hundred years leading up to this document, France and England have been fighting each other. The kings of England have been trying to supplant the kings of France, and there's been a hundred years' war. It's been, and you know, the American Revolution is sort of a part of that. But something different happens here. It's not one king trying to overthrow another king. It's the right of the people to abolish and institute a new government uh, to protect their own safety and happiness. Yeah. Yeah. The next sentence, prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. That basically is saying, you know, you shouldn't go around doing this all the time. You have to have a really, really good reason because it's not as if just because you're kind of annoyed at your government, you should overthrow it. And this is why they have a pretty long document ahead of them. This is just the first two paragraphs. And this is important. This, I guess, reminds us of what this whole document is for. This is to communicate with the rest of the world. And as you mentioned, also France. Right. That, that look, you know, we're, not, we're not crazy folks here. We recognize this is a serious thing we're doing, that we don't take this lightly. That's what that sentence says exactly, which is you shouldn't do it just for light and transient causes. We're going to have to show you that we've got some real good reasons to do it. And that's what it goes on to say, uh, especially like while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. In other words, these are powerful words sort of saying that, you know, these are the type of things you really have to raise up arms against. And so then let's go to this sentence. Oh, sorry. And, 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 and I find this one really interesting. I mean, it's a kind of a less famous mm. part of it, but it says, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. So that it's really saying that normally men, even when their rights start to get imposed, they kind of just go along. You know, it's it. kind of like a frog in boiling water. Mm. They just kind of live with it. Uh, but but this but but when it gets too bad, yeah, that's when you have to take up arms. And you're right. That's the whole point of that. Is that experience has shown we kind of just go along with bad kings, just like <laughs> we go along with good kings, you know. But this is special. This is different. Yeah. What they're saying, yeah. and that's why they start the next sentence with the word "but." It's sort of the, this is the but this is different sentence. Yeah. Why is it different? But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, usurpations means. Hey, they're taking away our powers. Yeah. Pursuing invariably the same object evinces a desire to reduce them under absolute despotism. In other words, what's happened is the king and his parliament have decided to reduce it so that they have all the powers. Mm -hmm. they're, they're taxing without our consent. They're doing all sorts of things. They're quartering troops in our homes. That's when they say... It goes on to say, it is their right, in other words, the right of us, our people. Oh, it is their duty 
to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. I mean, think about that. How often had that been happening before? Yeah, yeah, especially for, for the people to do it. Right. I mean, we very rarely have had a people-led rebellion to say, you've usurped, you these yeah. usurpations, you've usurped our rights. There's been a long train of abuses, and you've reduced us to absolute despotism. Actually, uh, Jefferson, when he writes that phrase, has an even you know grander phrases about spite <laughs> of everything else. And Franklin says, I think we're going a bit overboard here. Let's just say reduce them under absolute despotism, which means you've taken away all of our rights. You've yeah. become a despot. Yeah. Then, uh, you know, it's been, he goes on to say, such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies. In other words, we've been pretty patient up to now. <laughs> you put on a tea tax, you put on a paper tax, you put on a stamp act, you haven't, you have taxation without representation, you haven't allowed us to be part of the parliament voting on our own taxes. So we've been pretty patient of these things. And such is now the necessity which constrains them, meaning constrains us, yeah. the people of the United States, to alter their former systems of government. And now is when they set up what is going to be the rest of the document. They yeah. attack the king. The yeah. history of the present king of Great Britain, there we have him up there, George III, you know, there he is. Yeah. Look yeah. At, looking kind of nice, like yes. he's not, not well the dressed. worst of all. He's I might get some bows myself. That looks right, nice right. But he looks yeah. definitely like a royal uh, <laughs> person. But the history of this present king of Great Britain is history of repeated injuries and usurpations. They all have all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. Now, you know what? I think they were overstating it a bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to be kind to King George here, but what they did is they taxed the tea. They tax a stamp. They were using the tax revenues to help support the colonies. I think Parliament felt that, well, you could argue a little bit that we're taxing without getting your consent. But I think they would say, hey, wait, absolute tyranny, you know, injuries, repeated injuries and usurpations, they're going too far. And there was a lot of people, at least half the people in the colonies then, kind of agreed with the English. They were still loyal. And so what they do, Jefferson... Franklin and Adams and the people writing this is they say, we're going to have to show you while we're using this strong language. It's a wonderful sentence to me to prove this. Let facts be submitted to a candid world. That's what this declaration is. We are going to give you all the facts and try to prove it's been absolute tyranny that we've been suffering. And they work themselves up into convincing themselves and probably the rest and, of history. And to be fair to them, you know, probably in 1774 or even you know, mm. uh, March of 1775, they, they might have felt like that. But now blood, there was bloodshed now. And right. So people right. had been killed. And now, of course, people are, are definitely going to be much more passionate about the Once situation. you, I mean, yeah, I guess you could, you know, sense it in uh, your own sense of history. Once people start fighting, yeah. they get themselves a bit worked up. I could absolutely, absolutely, and, and and it's British troops on American soil. It's American families, American fathers who are who are dying, and that, that's how they, they. I could imagine they would start to see these things. Right, it starts to get out of hand without their intention. The Continental Congress didn't declare war back in 1775. You have a bunch of militia people in Lexington and Concord getting all riled up by Paul Revere because the British are coming to take some of the munitions out of the. Uh, out of the arsenals in Lexington and Concord. So he's riding and saying the British are coming, and then the militiamen come out. And suddenly, up in Massachusetts, this revolution that even most of the people in the Continental Congress weren't quite ready for has begun to happen. And, you know, do you, I mean, Once you sense happens, that. You One get, thing's yeah. been. And then, and then after this, they go on and list. That's the rest of the document, the rest of the declaration, is just line after line of the king has done this, the king has done that. And most importantly, as you see in this, the history of the present king of Great Britain, they're revolting now against the king, not just the parliament that has Mm -hmm. voted these taxes, but they're saying it's the king himself that we're rebelling against. And that's what made it a true revolution rather than just trying to get rid of the parliament, which is temporary. Fascinating. 